Narada said, O Brahma, dear, of great intellect, please tell me, O most eloquent one, when Vishnu went away, what happened? Oh, what did you do? Brahma said, O Brahmana, best of my sons, listen attentively to what I did when Lord Vishnu went away. I began a continuous laudatory prayer of the goddess Durga, the beloved of Shiva, the creator of the universe, of the nature of Vidya and Avidya, and identical with the pure supreme Brahman. I salute the goddess who is omnipresent, eternal, for whom there is no support, who is never distressed, who is the mother of the three deities, who is the grossest of the gross and yet has no form. O goddess of the devas, you are perfect knowledge, supreme bliss, identical with the supreme soul. Be pleased. Grant me the fulfillment of my task obeisance to you. O celestial sage, on being thus lauded, Chandika, the mystic slumber, appeared before me. Her complexion had the glossy hue of Carilium. She had comely features. She had four divine arms. She was seated on a lion. She showed the mystic gesture of granting boons by one of her hands and pearls adorned her disheveled hair. Her face shone like the autumnal moon. The crescent moon bedecked her forehead. She had three eyes, looked beautiful, and the nails of her lotus-like feet glistened. O oh, sage, seeing her who is Shiva's energy herself, directly in front of me, my lofty shoulders bent down with devotion and I eulogized her after due obeisance. Obeisance, obeisance to thee, who art in the form of pravriti, action, and nivriti, abstinence, who art in the form of creation and sustenance of the universe. Thou art the eternal energy of the movable and the immovable beings, capable of enchanting everyone. Thou hast manifested thyself as Sri, a garland around Keshava's form, who in the form of earth holdest everything within, who art of yore the great goddess causing creation and the destruction of the three worlds, and art beyond the three gunas. Thou art present in everything, even in the essential atom, and who art charmingly honored by yogins, who art perceivable in the hearts of the yogins purified by restraints, as well as in the path of their meditation. Thou art vidya of diverse sorts. Thou art endowed with illumination, purity, and detachment. Thou assumest kutasta, perpetually immovable, avyakta, unmanifest, and ananta, infinite form and thou art the eternal time holding all the worlds. O Shiva, thou art the prime cause of the three gunas and art still beyond them, but in conjunction with the gunas, thou certainly infusest the seed of change in every matter. Thou art the fourth to the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas, but devoid of their depravity, though these originate from thee. Thou createst, protectest, and devourest the whole universe within and without, having three gunas as its only cause. I pay my homage to thee, O Shiva's consort, for the eternal welfare of the universe. O seed of all the worlds, thou art knowable as well as knowledge thyself. On hearing these words of mine, uttered like the words of ordinary people, Kali, the conceiver of the worlds, told me, the creator of the worlds, in words full of love. The goddess said, O Brahma, why was I lauded by you? If you have been slighted by anyone, please mention it quickly to me. When I have personally appeared, the realization of your desires is certain. 
Hence, let me know your desires. I shall certainly fulfill them. Brahma said, O Goddess, be pleased with me and listen. O omniscient Goddess, I speak out my mind only since you have commanded me thus. O Goddess of Devas, Shiva the Yogin, who is your husband and who, as Rudra manifested himself formerly through my forehead, has now occupied Kailash. The Lord of Goblins is performing penance all alone. Since he does not desire a wife, he is without a wife. He is free from mental aberrations. O Sati, fascinate him, lest he should cast his glance on another lady. Excepting you, none will be able to capture his mind. Hence, you alone should fascinate Shiva through your beauty. O Shiva, being born as Daksha's daughter, you should become Rudra's wife. Just as, assuming the physical form of Lakshmi, you delight Vishnu, so act similarly to Rudra for the benefit of the universe. The bull emblem deity rebuked me merely for my feelings of love for a woman. How can he take a wife unto himself, O goddess, on his own accord? Shiva is the cause of this universe in the beginning, middle, and end. If he remains detached and refuses to take a wife, how can auspicious creation come into being? This thought has tormented me. It was not conducive to any benefit to seek another shelter, so I request you, for the benefit of the universe, to accomplish the undertaking. O Mother of the Universe, Vishnu is not competent to enthrall him, nor Lakshmi, nor Kama, nor I. In fact, no one other than you. Hence, be born as Daksha's daughter, great goddess of celestial beauty, Inspired by my devotion, be pleased to become his wife and fascinate the Lord, who at present is detached from the world. O goddess of Devas, Daksha is performing a penance on the north of the milky ocean with his mind controlled and directed towards you. He is steady in performing the rite. On hearing my words, Shiva began to reflect then. The mother of the universe, surprised in her mind, thought these words. The goddess thought, Oh, this is an extremely wonderful thing. Brahma is the reciter of the Vedas and the creator of the universe. He is endowed with great knowledge. Yet, what is this that he says? A great delusion has beset his mind that makes him unhappy. That is why he desires to cause the fascination of Shiva, who is free from mental aberration. This Brahma desires the favor of power from me to enchant Shiva. What does he gain thereby? The great Lord is free from delusion and mental aberrations. I am a mere slave of Shiva, the supreme Brahman, the attributeless God who is free from depravity always subservient to his bidding. Shiva, who is Parabrahman, has become Rudra in a perfect and full-fledged incarnation and manifestation. The independent Lord has manifested like this to lift up his devotees. Since he is the Lord of Vishnu and Brahma, he can never be inferior to Shiva. He is respectfully adhering to yoga practice. He is the Lord of Illusion, but is not absorbed in it. He is the greatest of the great. This Brahma considers him his son, and on a par with ordinary devas. Hence, deluded by ignorance, he desires to delude him. If I do not grant him the boon, the convention established in the Vedas would be violated. Then what shall I do to prevent the great Lord from being angry with me? After pondering thus, Shiva thought of Shiva. After getting the permission of Shiva, Durga said to me, O Brahma, what you have said is entirely true. 
There is no other lady to fascinate Shiva. A great truth has been pointed out by you, that if Shiva does not take a wife unto himself, the creation cannot continue long. I too had been endeavoring to enchant this great Lord. After your request my efforts shall be redoubled. I shall so endeavor that Shiva should take a wife unto himself, being thus deluded himself, O Brahma. I shall take up the body of Sati and be subservient to him, even as Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, is the beloved of Vishnu. O Brahma, thanks to his own favor, I shall so endeavor as to make him subservient to me always. O Brahma, being born of Daksha's wife in the form of Sati, I shall duly honor Shiva with my sports. Just as ordinary mortals on the earth are subservient to their women folk, so also Shiva shall be subservient to a woman due to my ardent devotion. Brahma said, After addressing me thus, Shiva, the mother of the universe, vanished from the scene even as I was watching her. When she had vanished, I, the grandfather of the worlds, went to my sons and narrated everything to them. <laughs>